Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Digital and Computing um, event, where we're going to talk a little about our FE courses and our HE courses. So we'll do introductions first. Over to you, Stig Jensen. Hi there. My name is Stig Jensen. I am course leader at Hubert College for the digital courses. My name's Tom Owens. I am a lecturer on our FE Digital Media course, and I'm also course leader for our HE Games Design course. Hi, my name's Ali Foran. I'm faculty lead for engineering, business and computing, and I teach on computing, business and games design. Reach your goals by doing something you love. Up your game and prove the doubt is wrong. Believe in yourself and achieve your potential. The career you want is waiting for you. The opportunities are here. The expertise are here. The support is here. The inspiration is here. Exits are located at the rear of the cabin and at the front of the cabin. Grow. Thrive. Innovate. Succeed. Wherever you want your story to take you, starts at Hugh Baird College. Well, let me start by explaining about the, um, the digital courses that we have. We have three levels in all, level one, two, and three. And it all depends on what qualifications that you get, which level you can go on. Uh, the level one is called IT user skills, and there are a lot of very useful units that you would use, that you would need to actually gain employment, such as IT security, um, spreadsheet skills, database skills, uh, setting up an IT system and so on. Um, those skills will um, be going to more, more depth in on the level two course, which is the extended certificate. And on there, we have two exams. Um, and it's a year course. Let me just say the level one course is a year as well. So the level two course is one year and we will, it's basically a technician's course. So if you'd like to be a technician, um, someone who repairs computers, who takes them apart and fixes them, someone who maintains computer networks, someone who um, has a lot to do with cybersecurity and so on. These are the skills of the future and then that will be the course for you. And um, leading on to that is the, the level three course in computing, which is worth three A levels, and it's a two year course. And if you wanted to, you could go straight into an apprenticeship or a degree with that. Um, there are similar units on level three as there are on level one and two, but obviously uh, in more detail. So, for example, you'll be doing um, a lot more to do with IT security, cyber security, uh, network installation, uh, how computers actually work sort of the, the computer architecture, the um, the language that computers use and so on. There'll be quite a lot of computer programming as well. So if you'd like to be a computer programmer, then you know that would be the course for you. There's also a creative element to it. We have a web design module in it, along with um, what's called HCI, human computer interaction. So it's a sort of the, um, the theory behind how apps are created in mobile phones and why buttons are a certain shape and, and a certain color and so on. And um, there's a social media marketing unit as well. Um, so as I say, there's a lot of transferable skills on this on this course and you could eventually go into a wide range of field networks, uh, IT security, um, programming, social media, even web design. Um, the GCSEs you would need to get onto a level three course would be at least four GCSEs at grade four and above, ideally including maths and English, as there is uh, quite a lot of programming involved, uh, exciting programming where you would need a good maths foundation. Um, the level two course, um, you would need at least four grade threes. Let me just get that right. Grade threes at GCSE. And for the level one course, you don't need any formal qualifications. So there's a course to suit everyone. Um, and they are geared towards having a, a very interesting and fulfilling career in IT um, with regards to all, all the units that, that we teach. Um, could I now pass over to 
Tom Owens. Of course you can. To talk about the, the game design part. Thank you. Yeah, so um, similar to the computing level three, we also run a uh, games design digital media level three. Some of the units that you'll cover, some of the topics are um, how to respond to client commissions. So if a client asks you, you know, to create a certain product for them, a website, a game, um, a animated film, you need to know how to interpret those client requests into a completed product that meets that client's needs. So it's a combination of understanding what a client's asking for and then having the skills and knowledge to be able to create that product for the client. That starts right at pre-production. So we look at, you know, how do you gather assets? How do you make sure your work will be legally and ethically compliant? Um, right through to reflection. And in the middle, you'll create the product. So on our first year, for example, you'll be given a client brief that asks for a certain type of 2D game to be produced. You'll do pre-production. Um, you'll get your game assets, your, you know, your audio files, any art assets you want to use. Um, you'll research, you know, the background to whatever type of game it is, what kind of features would you expect to have? Then you'll go into a new unit, which is digital games production, where you'll actually develop a game. So you'll learn programming skills, you'll learn design skills, you'll learn project management skills, um, and you'll learn them all in, you know, what we call a professional practice context. So we'll be treating it not as a classroom, but as an actual um, piece of work for the client um, throughout. Finally, at the end of that, um, we understand, you know, obviously important to market. It's what we're doing right now. It's important to market your product. So then we move into advertising production. So at the end of your first year, you will then um, take your gameplay footage. You will take all your backgrounds to, you know, this client brief, your target audience who tamed that. Um, and you'll produce a short YouTube style advert that promotes your game with the game title, the logo, gameplay footage, uh, you know, a catchy soundtrack to get people interested. And, you know, throughout the year, you'll be looking at things like how to respond to commissions, how to run a media campaign, how media representation is handled. Um, on your second year, then, we take those skills and we step them up a level. So you'll do some work in 3D modeling to prepare for 3D game production. You'll look at game engine scripting, so we'll take code to another level. Um, you'll look at games testing, which is more complex than it, it seems. Um, it's also more fun than it seems. So, you know, you get to test some games that other people in your class and people from previous years have made um, and generally just develop those digital media skills further. You'll also uh, produce a website in the second year, which will be used to you know market your game. It'll be a game website. So amidst all that, there are four exams there in topics, you know, such as digital media skills, responding to a commission. So that's why we teach those skills. If you can respond to a client commission, you can do quite well in that exam. Um, to move over to our HE, I am also course leader for our um, HE games design course. Now, this is a course that has no exams, so sign up to that if you don't like exams. Um, and we cover sort of fewer topics, but in more depth. So in your first year on your games design qualification, you will look at um, drawing for design. So coming up with, you know, meaningful character designs, art assets for a specific um, theme, for a specific game or concept. You'll also look at contextual studies. So, you know, ensuring that when we do study, we keep things in the context we're working towards. So how, you know, do you look at um, topics like ethical design through the lens of games design? How does it relate? And we also go into creative thinking. So you'll create some 3D environments. You'll create some physical props. You'll get out in the world and, you know, you'll do some visits. You'll, um, I think this year, you know, we were out taking sort of charcoal rubbins of surfaces to find textures. Um, and you'll also have an introduction to games design. So we'll take what we do on the level three, really. Um, we reintroduce those concepts and then we take it to a deeper level. So you'll actually create a 2D game with a detailed level design. And you'll also create a board game in that first year amidst other bits of work. But they're the two major projects that you'll work on. And I'll just show you a quick example of one of the games um, that was made. I won't go into the actual game just, just for time. Um, but what you'll see is this is our engine that we use for our 2D games. Um, and our students can create objects that you'll see down on the right, like player one, player two, mini boss, boss, wall, walls less exciting. And then we write the code. So this is all. I won't bore you with the details for now. That that comes when you enroll. Um, this code basically handles player movement, so your player can move around the world. Anyone who's done any programming, you know, will probably recognize some of these concepts. 
And then, yeah, we have this code. And speaking of the arse assets, our students create animated 2D arse assets like this uh, boss that will go in the level, a mini boss. So you get that idea. And if I scroll up to sprites of, of what's expected um, in these courses, so you know we have these idle states for characters. So I shall close that. And um, I shall pass you over to Ellie Faram. Okay, so I'm only going to talk about computing, despite the fact that I do teach on a few courses. So the computing it involves two years only. It's a foundation degree. There are six modules on both years. So in the first year, we look at practitioner skills. So you're given a brief and you have to go and fact find and find out whether it's feasible to run with a project. You, uh, we then introduce you to programming. And although it's introduction to programming, it's actually the next step up from what Stig was explaining before. We look at systems analysis. So you're given a brief there and we fact find and build a database ready to solve a problem for a client. You're then going to look into networking and we've also got interactive apps and computer systems security on year one. Now on year one, you also have two exams to do and we do them usually in May time. On year two, We've got Agile and HCI, so you're given briefs and you're allowed to go and use your initiative because by this time now, you're not only um, taking part in the activities that we've got in classes, but you're expected to now go and uh, be on board and take some more initiative and work things out for yourself as well. So whereas we don't um, deliver everything to you, you're now expected to go and research and provide answers towards everything. We now take also um, from systems analysis in year one, we take databases on board and we deliver that further. So you're building a database that will eventually be attached to a website. With then talking of websites, we'll take interactive applications further and we'll look at um, placements. Now, placements is a huge success for us on computing. We've got um, many people who have been on the course who have gone on and got some fabulous jobs out of it. We've got a member of staff in our college who was on the course quite a few years ago and is now an IT technician. Um, we've got a young lad who's only just finishing his second year, Richie. He actually works for a company called Tornado. He's working with them as a web designer based on getting his placement with them. And then Darren Curran, who's been our poster boy, works as a um, software developer for a company called Clientware. Um, the course itself is affiliated with UCLAN. We work in tandem with them, so they will tell us the sort of um, activities they want delivered. They will tell us what software to use, and then we develop them further and allow you to have a go at working on um, different aspects of each particular module. <clears throat> Um, what else can I tell you? Okay, so the cost of the course is £8,000 a year. Um, we are timetable to be in at least two and a half days a week. It depends on how many students are in. So usually your timetable will fall under 14 hours. Um, but it, it can be, we can get an extra hour depending whether we get large numbers of students. We have um, new, new this year, we've got SEOs come on board with us. So they have supported both staff and students with pastoral care and extra academic uh, work as well. We are based in the L20 building. Not too sure whether many of you know where that is, but it's the building that's inside the park. The jobs that you can move on to from here are going to be things like IT technician, web developers, software developers, analysts. You can go into um, technical jobs such as um, IT repair and hardware software. Um, any questions, anybody?
<clears throat> I'd like to talk about one of our former students, um, Aaron Housen, who was with us uh, a few years ago. Um, he went to Liverpool John Moores University and studied games development. And I'd like to talk to you about him because he was quite a shy student when he started. And um, over the, the two years that he was with us, he built up a lot of confidence and it was great to see. He struggled initially, but because he was dedicated and he worked so hard, he got uh, distinctions in, I think, virtually all his units. Um, and he was a success story. So what I'd like, like to just impress upon anyone watching today is that uh, we are there to help you. But also as a level three student, as he was, you have to take the initiative and, and work at home as well. Um, and obviously you can be in contact with your, with your tutors constantly. And the reason why he was successful, as I say, is because he would, he would ask for help. He would work at home. He would take the initiative to actually do things outside of college as well. So the people who get the highest grades, um, they're the ones who put a lot of effort in almost as many hours outside of college as inside college. Um, and he was dedicated and he, he worked really hard. So he's one of our success success stories, if I can say it. Uh, and it was great to see him actually get a place at Liverpool John Moores University. Um, so a student who built up his confidence throughout the two years, um, worked very hard, was very dedicated. And that's what you need really to be successful. You need to be dedicated and you, you need to have a goal in mind of where you'd like to go. So Aaron knew from day one that he'd like to be a games developer and he knew exactly um, what he had to do to achieve that. And he did it because he was just a great student, basically. So that was uh, Aaron Housen. OK, so someone posted a question. How do you apply for a university course? If you can go online and look at Hubert College and you will see all the individual courses that we deliver right across the board. So that's from year zero right the way through up to the top up year. What you need to do is fill out an application form and then that will get sent an alert and delivered to the course leader for whichever course it is that you're interested in. For any new people coming in on board next September and wanting to go on to a university course, you're going to have to fill out what we call a UCAS form. Um, again, you do that online. Uh, you need to get somebody to give you a, a reference. You also need to fill out student finance as well. Now, that's quite a lengthy form, so you need to be quite patient, but you need to apply for it in plenty of time so to uh, enable all your fees to be paid for. Okay, I'd like to discuss um, what a student could do after completing a level three course. Uh, there are quite a few options. One of them is to go straight into employment. And if you do the, for example, the computing course, you could get a job as a, a junior technician and, and work your way up. You could go on to um, do a foundation degree with us and the top up to a full degree or go to any university of your choice, depending on, on your grades. Or you could also do what's becoming a lot more popular now is a, an apprenticeship, a higher apprenticeship. So there are at least uh, four different routes that you, that you could take uh, after the level three course. So level three course is two years. So you can go into employment, apprenticeship or in, into higher education. So another good question is uh, what kind of software we use on the courses? We try to keep the software consistent between level three and HE. So for our game development, we use um, a piece of software called Game Maker Studio 2, which is a 2D game engine. And then for our 3D, we use the Unreal Engine 4. Although 5 has just been announced, so in a couple of years, we're probably going to move over. Um, for our more visual side, um, I'm also going to touch on hardware a little because we do have high-spec computers. We do have graphics tablets for the art side. So for digital art, you will be working on you know, industry um, standard equipment. But also for the software, we use a 3D modeling tool called Autodesk Maya. If you've ever used 3DS Max or Blender, it's very, very similar. It's just got a different UI, so you can transfer a lot of your skills. Um, we also have full access to the Adobe Suite. So when it comes to creating any assets, um, we use Photoshop. When it comes to creating any edited film, we use Adobe Premiere. 
Okay, someone's asked, do we have any guest speakers or enrichment trips? We actually encourage as many guest speakers as possible. We need them to come on board to allow you to get a real feel for what goes on in the working environment. And as for enrichment trips, we do go abroad with some classes as much as we stay local as well. So in the past, we've gone to Prague, we've gone to Budapest, uh, Madrid. We do like to try and get our students abroad currently due to the uh, situation at hand. That's not going to happen for a while. Um, and we also like to be able to take our students to the local venues such as museums. That's great. Thanks, Ellie and Tom. Uh, I'd like to wrap up now by saying thank you for watching everyone on this broadcast and please do get in touch with us if you've got any further questions about anything we've discussed, uh, life at the college or courses and so on and we're still open for applications for September start. Thank you. Thank you everyone. You can catch me at thomas.owens at hubert.ac.uk if you have any queries or you can just contact our college dashboard. Thank you. Thank you.